Hello and welcome, my name is Nilaus and this is episode 17 of our Let's Play campaign of C-Block. This episode is a short tutorial where we will walk through what I've achieved in the last, um, what is it, seven hours of streaming. So we are now uh, well beyond where we left off last time in this YouTube video. That's uh, the previous video we left off where I had originally just got ECBs, our electronic circuit boards. You can see here the base is much bigger. I try to retain retain a square and and set up as possible because that gives me more surface area, more instead of just like a long appendages. I don't know if it makes it better or worse, but I like it this way. Now, let's dive in to some of what we've been building. There are now different sections in this base. This here is our factory. We are building a lot of things. The last thing we I built last time was pretty much the electronic circuit boards. They are now very stable, 1,000 of those. I built a lot of other things that really continue the check tree, such as lots of batteries, and the batteries, of course, to be used in accumulators. And the accumulators, we have also that stable at 500, which means if we zoom up to level, then we can see here we have a ton of accumulators. Well, not really a ton, but I can always just put in more. We've also upgraded our solar farm and power is less and less of a problem. Of course, the base is pretty much idle now because I've been doing some restructuring. But now the bigger, <clears throat> the bigger issue is actually just scaling up, continuing to say scale up, uh, get in terms of power. It's I'm continually producing solar panels. I'm continuously producing accumulators. All right. They just need to be fed with materials and then the rest, as they say, is magic. That means my beloved early steam batteries, I need to take those out soon and repurpose this area for something else. I have a feeling that since there's kind of an area over here, I might use it for just building solar panels that way or something else. We also have this is our slag production. This is two very simple columns. They're pretty big and they generate pretty much a full, uh, pretty close to a full yellow belt. Plus it also fills up these two quite efficiently. This enables us to go up here and have at the current moment 17,000 uh, what I call landfill that we will need to expand the base. That is sorely needed as well because I still need more space. So far space is not really a big deal. What you can also see is up here, this is used to feed this area. This is currently being in a deconstruction phase. I'm going to remove the, this area here and uh, expand something else. We'll come back to that a bit later. This also means that I've changed my methanol and plastic production to be bot based and I've transitioned everything into bots. You can also see my robots here. They're moving quite a lot faster because now I'm using Angel's Mark II robots. They are absolutely brilliant. These are my favorite robots. I much prefer this one. They are quietly, quietly moving 200 iron ore about. You see here, yeah, 200, that's 500. Uh, and, and this is just really, really nice to do that, the, to do it this way. Um, it, it gives a very relaxed and calm setup of the base instead of these very, very frantic movements of the normal bots and even more so when it comes to Angel's, uh, to Bob's robots. What we have here is also something that we are in progress. Let's just skip that for now. After our electronic circuit boards, well, we didn't craft anything more up here. Uh, yeah, we did. We crafted some electronic engines, electric engines, in order to make our Mark II robots here. Very easy. Up here, this is uh, like a, an array for anything that comes in multiple tiers. The reason why I've made room for it is because I need room for every single tier. And I just want to scale up as well. So every time I find something, I said, oh, I need to know the electrolyzer. Put it up here because it's in multiple tiers. Anything in three tiers or more. I thought I could have more tiers in terms of of the electronic uh, machines, but oh well. Now, what we have also been working on the last couple of uh, sessions, I spent a lot of time on designing. So we designed this one. I'm really proud of this one. It's very scalable. This is a replacement for the old a green algae farm. This produces wood pellets, and you can see here we have uh, quite a bit of wood pellets being being cons or being stockpiled. This area is going to be scaled up many times over. 
I don't exactly know for what now that I think of it, because what do we need more coal for? Not really anything. So at this point, this is going to be fine. It has uh, some setup up here where I really use, utilize robots. The robots are coming in with the slag. You can see gradually, I can move the mouse, of course, to the right, how it's just scaling down using a combination of inserters and uh, loaders as well. So if you look at this, it looks like really simple, but man, did I spend a lot of time on making something that looks just, yeah, I think it honestly looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. It works really well. That's the two conditions. Also this part, just, it's perfectly balanced. You can see everything here is green. It's just perfectly balanced with each other. Mm. Almost perfectly balanced. Yeah, it's close enough. It will sometimes be idle because I want to make sure that this one is you don't accrue anything here. Anything produced in the big ones, the big slow ones, should be possible to pr process through the rest of the chain. This can easily be scal scaled up because it's tileable. So we can do that if you want more methanol or wood, wood pellets. Now let's move over to this design. I really wanted to have a design that created the crushed ore that was modular. The first thing we had to find out was the ratios. The ratio, and they were now when working at the same mark level, these are Mark 1s, and this is also a Mark, well, it's an Ore Crusher Mark 1. So basically, the ratio is 3 liquefier Mark 1 to 4 refiltration units into 8 crystallizers into 1 Ore Crusher. So the whole thing is scaled towards the 1 Ore Crusher. And this one is just continuously working with what we have here. It, um, it It's actually very nice. So I had to build a setup here that is robot operated and works independent. The reason why it's independent is extremely important in this case, because I want to be absolutely sure that if I need to scale something up, I can just take the blueprint and stamp it down. That is not possible if, for example, I was saying, take the, uh, take the sulfuric wastewater and just lead it out to the side, because at some point it will fill up. It'll fill up so much that it cannot empty fast enough in the pipes. And that means I cannot scale up anymore. And I need to do all sorts of contingencies. But this one, since it's completely robotized, I can just stamp down one more, change the recipes and produce more, which is exactly what I've done up here. This is our new ore production that I'm in the process of making. These ones have one crushed ore processor each running. And this kind of puts it in perspective. If you think about the size of a normal base, where you maybe have I don't know, 10, 20, whatever uh, of, the, of the gold crushers running. And here I have like one, that's all I get. So here I have the different ones. I can only fit in five. That means I do not have cretinium yet. And this is why I'm working on removing this so that this lane here all the way over, will just be only this. What happens afterwards is for example, here for the iron, the iron is using geolite and uh, and sapphire in order to make iron ore and that gets freighted into the normal processor here that's another almost 100 coming in and there it goes or copper is actually stuck because this would require additional cretinium and i do not have any cretinium so before this would actually proceed i need to remove this area we need to pay quite a bit of attention uh that we actually make a really structural and industrial sulfur production because we have to make sure that we keep feeding with sulfur. It's actually right now, it should be, as far as I can calculate, a slightly negative loop that will gradually feed up and they'll gradually empty out. If you look at this one, it's actually quite a neat setup where I have this one pumping out the sulfuric acid that goes it around. And these ones are all formed around they request a chest so that they can work. These are putting in here and then goes in here. That's a very, very neat setup. I think it took a while to come up with that idea, but I like it nonetheless. This one is running stable. The max capacity is 12,000. So it's running pretty damn stable at this point. And this one again can also just easily be scaled up as we want. So what's going to happen now is actually, I need to replenish this. Then I need to build, this is what I'm starting to indicate here. I need to do the refining so that I can make all the different types of materials, not all, but pretty much all of them, all the different types of raw ore that will then be put onto this one, the smelting area that also probably needs to be uh, repurposed to some degree. And that will be uh, making 
just really scaling up the base at at least a factor two, maybe even more compared to, well, actually it will be more than factor two of the original. One more thing that I wanted to show is this one. This is our uh, clay bricks production facility. I am currently having 7.4, 8.4 thousand of these, and I can use them for paving the world, a nice rose color, but I don't. What I also have over here is taking my wood pellets and just making it to coal, uh, to coal, to coke, to carbon, and to coke pellets. So I have all of these things if should I need them. And beyond that, I don't really need what know what I need this for. Maybe more methanol, but then we'll take it from there. Oh, right, I know it. I need actually need a lot more for coal, coal because coal will be fueling our Burgess process and Fisher Trops process for getting petrochemical started. One of the big next challenges will be the blue science, but I'm not going to dive into the blue science until I have scaled up my production. Because in order to make blue science, I need all of the stuff I have. I have NAFTA, I have that. But then I also need gold. Gold comes from, comes from only one place, and that's rubite refining sorting. Rubite sorting refined. Refining, sorting, rubite, whatever. Rubite chunk sorting, yes. This one is the only place I can get gold, and not even a lot of gold. And I yet generate a ton of crap as well. Ah, it's not that bad. So this is, I'm unfortunately going to have to suffice with this one because I do not have the pure gold sorting yet. It's also blue science, so I will only get it after I have produced the first gold. Now, and the other one is glass. Glass should be easy to make, but I need it from silicon as well. That will be sort of the next steps moving up the base. I am not particularly running fast, but I'm spending a tremendous amount of time on designing things like this that will just be incredibly useful and scalable until it isn't anymore, but then we'll take it from there. Right, so I think this is a good summary of where we are. I also need to spend a lot of time on setting up uh, some more stone, uh, some more landfill to give us some more space to work on. I will, of course, take the robotized factory, move it up. The blue science, I'll probably have like this area here. It'd probably fit quite well, maybe in this one. This one might even be enough just to do science in this area. I don't know. I think so. Yeah, it definitely is. So we'll do science in this area and then scale up from there. Now, with that, thank you very much for joining. I will be continuing to stream. I try to stream two, two days a week because now there's a, there's a race going on of, of, of working on expanding the space and really uh, kicking it up a notch. And I'm really enjoying it very much. So I hope you're also enjoying it. I hope you are checking in on the stream when it's available. It's usually Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, evening European time, uh, but otherwise it's also always uploaded to YouTube. Now I'm going to let you go for now. Thank you very much for joining and I hope to see you soon. Cheers.